Look at that shine. If you're wanting to do this kit, stick around. I am going to go over some tips and tricks on how to finish this off. There is a part one to this video, so take a look at that if you haven't seen it yet. I will also rate this Busilla kit on my Leslie Busilla rating scale that I've created. And if you want to see a few more pictures of Little Bear and how he's doing, then stick around to the very end because I will add him in. Alright, let's do this kit. Once the house is done, it's time to do the steeple. The steeple is a little bit different because it has cardboard in it in order to give it more structure. Um, they did that with the tag as well. It also is, has more structure to it, which I like a lot. Um, if you want to know how to do that, because if you've never done it, it can seem a little intimidating. I created a mini video using the steeple as an example, and it will go through step by step on what to do. Now, like we talked about before, the bottom half of this stocking it includes two large white pieces of felt. So I had to put those on after the steeple was sewn on. You can see the middle looks a little see-through. That's because it's only one layer of white felt. So if that bothers you, you can put another layer behind it. You'll have to buy some extra white felt though to do that. However, I didn't. There's so much that goes in that section. It's gonna get covered up and it won't matter. So in my opinion, don't worry about it and just keep going. One thing to note about certain part of the stocking is that you're gonna do a lot of heavy embroidery work right here in this area. And I like pieces like that because they end up looking so beautiful. But sometimes when they don't provide backings to these, I will create my own. This one didn't need it because it ended up being stitched down on top of these little people. But notice how the people have backs to them. Sometimes I've come across some kits where you do heavy, heavy beading embroidery work and then there's no back to it and you're supposed to be able to like leave the top open or something like that um, and then you're like well everybody's gonna see the back of my stitches <laughs> so you can always create a back piece for something as long as you have some extra felt um, if this wasn't going to be tacked down on the top I would have found felt similar to this cream color white color I would have attached it to the back of this blanket if they wanted me to leave all of that open um, that probably would have been my preference but because they attached the top I didn't have to worry about that now I wanted to add a little extra sparkle um, somewhere. I know, like this kit doesn't have enough sparkle to it. But down below in this area, I just felt like all of this gold needed to have sparkle to it. So I added, if you can see that, I added in this gold metallic thread that I got. It is DMC. And I just had it on hand from other projects where I, I decided to do something similar. And I just added that one strand to the gold that was provided in the kit. And it just made a little nice shine. The sleigh runner has a Chanel stick inside of it, or you can also call it a pipe cleaner. It gives it more structure, you can bend it, and it's just way easier than stuffing. Another thing I wanted to point out is that these spaces that you create, they don't have to look exactly like the picture. You just have to be happy with how it looks. And that's my standard when I do faces. If she looks a little different than what the picture shows, that's fine, as long as she looks pretty. And her lips, I know they're a little bit thicker than the picture, little Angelina Jolie kind of <laughs> lips. But overall, I was really happy with her face. And I feel like she looked a little bit more lovingly at her significant other, husband, boyfriend, whoever that is to her, versus what the picture showed. <laughs> So I was like, let's let's do that. It's fine. The brittle that was on this horse, it's the last thing you do when you're creating the horse. And because it is the last thing, when I was putting on the brittle, I noticed that the back of my horse here, I, you could see everything I did in the back. So I decided that I was going to make an extra back piece to cover all of those stitches I added in at the end that weren't really hiding very well. Um, so it just makes it have a cleaner look. Uh, I just took some leftover cream felt from here and just attached it there. And I mean, when you look at the back of the stocking, I feel like that makes it just look so much nicer. Now, when it comes time to store your stocking away, I tend to buy these beautiful decorative boxes from Joann's and uh, I haven't been there in a long time actually, but I'm gonna get a new one for this stocking because my other one's a little full. Um, but the tissue paper you use to store it in is really important because you want it to be acid-free. It's going to protect your stocking, protect the colors, 
so I got this one off of Amazon and I will provide a link in the description box below so that you can just quickly click on it if you want to purchase it. I got a bunch of it and it's easy to store in my sewing room, um, but this is what I grabbed and that's what I'm going to wrap my stocking in. And then I'll be good and ready to go for Christmas time. When it comes time to choosing fabric for your lining, I try to make it complement the stocking the best that it can. And with this one, I love the red color and there's not a lot of it, but it pops out really well. So I wanted to do that same red color for the inside of the stocking. So I found this fabric off of Shabby Fabrics website and not only did the color match my stocking, but the design in it, it matched perfectly with what I did in the runner support. That nice gold embroidery I had to do with the metallic thread that I added in, it just seemed like it was the perfect fabric for the stocking. So I've developed a scale um, to kind of show how I rate kits based off of difficulty. This is how I section them off in my head. So the easiest one would be I've never sewn before, it's first kit approved. So a good example of that would be the under the seat ornaments. I feel like that is such a good kit to start off with if you've never sewn anything. Um, the next one would be a beginner. So someone who has opened their first kit and they at least know how to do an outline stitch, an applique, um, and they're ready to try more things that are still very doable. The next one would be an intermediate level kit. What comes to mind is Patrick Santa and that's because it just has a lot more going on. There's more pieces, way more embellishment. Um, you're doing faces, you're doing hair, you're doing a bunch of different things. And then finally, uh, there's the advanced kit, where a good example would be Santa's vintage car, where it's like a 3D model um, of a car that you make with a bunch of different things inside of it. And you have lights and all that stuff. How I would rate Dashing Through the Snow, I feel like that kit is really good for beginners. Um, someone who already has the applique stitch down, or at least knows how to do it, and stuff their pieces. Um, dashing Through the Snow is a really good next kit to do so that you're pushing yourself a little bit more and trying to start some new skills. Um, so if you've already opened it, you've never done this before, don't worry. Just feel free to ask questions. There's plenty of help out there. Um, they're still very doable for anybody who's never sewn before, so the instructions are very good to help you figure it out. So from here on out are just a few pictures and videos of Little Bear um, for you guys to see and see how he's doing. I did get hurt in February and he's just been so sweet and just been cuddling with me um, and just being Dr. Little Bear <laughs> is what we've been calling him. And he also had a birthday. He turned two, so he's officially an adult boy. Uh, but enjoy the videos that I, I did, um, and I will see you all next time when I release a new one. I will do probably another Let's Talk About Busilla video, and I will also show you what I've been working on lately for a new Busilla kit. I'll see you guys all then. Bye! Little Bear, are you going to get a treat? Are we waiting patiently? What's in the microwave? It's your treat! <laughs> Come on. Yep. Get away. <gasps> so exciting. Perfect. Wait. Okay. Good boy. Little bear. You're like sinking into the crack. Look at this. Don't you want to get out of it? No? No. <laughs> Buddy. It's like your own little bassinet.